What are you doing over there? What are you doing in that little corner that you like? Do you want to go for a walk? You do? <laughs> okay, come on, let's go. Okay, voice wake up, spirit wake up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay, I gotta get this out. I have done messages like this before, but you have to repeat it because days weeks months later you get a bunch of people who still ask you the same questions and even the people you've talked to about it can st still not get it i think i was a barking dog about right here i think partially that's because first of all believing in jesus Believing in God, having the Holy Spirit deposited in your heart is an act of God. Remember, no one comes to the Father through the Son, but it, even in the even Jesus says that it's only the Father can reveal the Son. And if you read scripture, heck, it says that the Jews have been blinded. And that some people's hearts are hardened. So it's only by, first of all, just belief. And then to receive Jesus takes an act of God. We are all sinners lost in this world full of evil and rebellion and we are descendants of Adam and Eve who took the tree of knowledge of good and evil now whether you want to be a literalist on that like I am or figurative <clears throat> it sh it still shows and indicates that mankind fell from a position of grace and glory that we had at one time with God walking with God in the cool of the day as his full child in the, made in the image of God which we lost so the, that answers all your problems of the problem of evil how can a loving God allow this and that God did not man did it and Satan and the fallen angels did it but God, even from the beginning, way back then, made a promise that the seed of Eve would crush and kill the seed of the devil. The Proto-Evangelum is what they call it, I think. The very first prophecy of Jesus Christ. And then <clears throat> God killed the lamb and clothed Adam and Eve with sheepskin and made clothes for them. So from that point forward, there was a temporary covering by the slaughtering of an innocent lamb. And then Abel did it and everybody on practiced through the Hebrews of a sacrificial animal for the temporary covering of the sin of our fallen nature now. Until John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God. And there's Jesus who came to die and was sacrificed and killed on the cross and rose again as the Lamb of God from the very beginning, the promised coming child to save all of us. So I can lay it out as simple as that for you 
and still some will not believe. Because it takes the act of God the Father. So you pray, you can ask, uh, even that power, even the power to ask God the Father for help, for understanding, and for the deposit of the Holy Spirit and belief in Jesus Christ. Even that could take an act of God. And so I pray for you, first off, that anybody who's trying to understand anything that I say or what the Bible says or some preacher or pastor or some Christian is saying, you first have to ask God to deposit His Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you will not get it. You'll be blind to anything I have to say. <clears throat> or the Bible or some preacher on the street corner or on TV. But once you get the deposit of the Holy Spirit, it all rings true. And your eyes open up and you, you see it. It's kind of like one of those picture posters that are like have an image behind an image. You got to look at it. Oh, and then once you see it, you go, oh, now, now you can see it every time, no problem. But at first you couldn't see it at all. So when it comes to the rapture, that's the first step. You're not going to understand. And now the question I get a lot is, it, and the, not just the question, but the attitude and like the spiritual response from people is like, you're an escapist. You're like suicidal. You don't want to help the world. You want to escape. And I, you know, why do you want this so bad? Why do you want the end of the world? Why do you talk about it so much? Why? You know what I mean? It's like people see it when you, when the, you know, even Christians, man. People see the rapture as like this escapist, almost suicidal obsession. <clears throat> You, like, okay, so let's say you got past the first step and all right, now you've asked God and you've got whatever deposit of the Holy Spirit in your life and you, you want to know the truth. And you're wondering about it. Why does this guy talk about the rapture every day? The Bible says, Jesus himself says, pray that you are counted worthy to escape all of these things. He didn't say, Pray that you're counted worthy to escape like this little portion of it, you know, just at the end or to escape and go to heaven. No, he made a statement and a promise by calling the believer into action to pray that they are counted worthy to escape all these things. Now we, we're worthy because of the blood of Jesus. You got to remember, you got to put Jesus goggles on Jesus because a lot of times he's talking about the kingdom but now that we're counted worthy to, what, escape. And Jesus said that there is a time coming on the world that will be unlike any other time. It will be the worst time in the history of mankind, in the history of this planet. The worst time reserved. A tiny portion of time, seven years Reserved as the worst time on earth where Satan will get full control again. And there's going to be the mixture of the, the little G gods and mankind and the mark of the beast and wars. And meanwhile, meteor showers are hitting the earth. Volcanoes, poisoned water, plagues. This is not a time of like making it through people go and hide themselves into the rocks and cry out for the mountains to fall on them and kill them and then they can't die because if you took the mark of the beast you'll become like wolverine and heal and be like a monster and not die transhumanism is on its way where it's right around the corner We've got it. We can plug in now. We can merge into the machine. And eventually nanobots will be inside to heal and restore cells. 
We can't create the spark of life, but we sure as hell can mend it. We can add parts. We have already known how to take pig parts and create new heart valves. We can do, we can, we can probably even clone organs. Excuse me. Sorry. So, the rapture is written in the Bible. All over it. From Noah being saved, from Enoch being pulled off before the flood, to the seven years of feasting, seven years of famine, the Jews come get saved. Daniel's lifted up, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go through the fire. All the way through Jesus then in the private conversations he had with his disciples, his friends after Judas left, when he said, I'm going now to prepare a place for you where there are many mansions and I will come back to take you where I am. That is not what the book of Revelations teaches. When Jesus, in the book of Revelations, He's coming back to live on the earth and bring a sword and destroy the dragon, man. The promise he made to the believers, his church, which just means the body, the gathering of believers, is that he's going to come back and then take us, take harpazo, take away and take us to the father's house. And this is all imagery of a Galilean wedding. Seven day wedding. In which we marry Jesus and become one and gain inheritance. All the inheritances that he has we get to share in. Okay? So it's in the Bible. Paul then gets the clarification from the risen Christ. After the atonement has been made and the blood of Jesus is cleansed earth and heaven, Jesus appears to Paul and reveals to him the mystery of salvation and the church and the gospel to the Gentiles, which is most of us, and the mystery of the rapture. Those, you know, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain will be caught up into the clouds. Where we will be with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Caught up to the clouds. Where's this catching away to the clouds in, in the Bible? Other than the hidden mystery of the rapture. And Jesus, the promise he made of take, taking people out into the Father's house. So, we could go further and further. I mean, you could do a giant academic studies about what the rapture is and the promise that it's actually written and spoken of by Jesus, by Paul, by Peter, by everybody. Moses. It's all in there. Then they go, well, okay. You can get, you can get a Christian to go, yeah, okay, yeah, I... I know what you mean. Yes, there is a rapture. They finally go, yeah, okay. I see it's written in there. There's a promise that Jesus made and he's good for it. But man, you got to be about the kingdom here. You got to be about your community and you're making America great again. Here's the number one confusion on that. Most Christians, because if you include Catholics, then you got most Christians believe that the church is supposed to bring down the kingdom of heaven here on earth as it is in heaven so it is you know maybe so here on earth this is a confusion that dr andy woods is the number one defender of under this understanding Oh, what is the name of his book? It's the Kingdom Gospel or something like that. You've got to check out Dr. Andy Wood's series on this, but a lot of other practical 
teachers teach about this. The kingdom is not brought. The kingdom of heaven, which includes promises of Israel and their land, is included in that. The kingdom of heaven is not brought by human hands. It is not brought by the church. It's brought when Jesus himself comes down and reigns for a thousand years. That's when those promises are fulfilled. What, okay, so is that a, some sort of excuse? So you don't have to do anything? No. Wherever I go, and any Christian, any, especially pre-trib people, they preach out and witness to people more than anyone. Time is short. Come to Jesus. You don't want to be here for this. You can escape it. No one, no one is more obsessed with telling people about Jesus than a pre-trib rapture believer. No one. The fire is almost only left in those people. Go to a church and see what your pastor's talking about. How can Jesus make you a better person? How can you be more spiritual? How can you be in touch with God? How can you change your life? How can you have a better life? And you know what? Shoot, man, those messages are not wrong. They're just not the full story. And it's freaking futile. Because you ain't ever going to get it. <laughs> now, yeah, they say, we'll be perfect as God is perfect. Sure, man. Yeah, we... However, I can counter the same scriptures and say, Paul says, I put no trust in the flesh. None. And I never look back. I press forward. No trust in the flesh. None. I cannot be... Even Arnold Schwarzenegger, even Mr. Universe, even some paleo guy who eats just and wears those weird shoes. They have the toes, the toe shoes, and he's better than you, isn't he? He wears the toe shoes. You don't. <laughs> you don't wear those, do you? I don't. I wear freaking slippers and sweats, man. He doesn't drink beer. Yeah, well, Jesus did. And so do I. The spirit of life has liberty. Where Jesus is, there's liberty. Now here's the real issue. Does my freedom burden you? And if it does, then it actually is up to me to not use my freedom to cause you to stumble. But I'm not going to let your limitations of law and thoughts of self-righteousness and how you can be better. Pin me down, because it does. I, I, I can get paralyzed with my own self-failure. If I don't get up and get going, do one of these, pray, ask Jesus, thank you Jesus, speak it out, get my flame going. I'm one of those people who will just like collapse in depression and be like, oh Lord, I suck. I, I, you, why do you love me? Do you love me? Am I still saved? Like, it, it can get that bad. My first 10 years of being born again was like that. Super on fire zealot, and the second I had one cigarette, or I said a swear word, or I had some massive, nasty thoughts, tumbled into a depression of, oh my God, I lost it. It wasn't until I read Romans 8, 1. Therefore, now there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ wasn't until I got through Romans 6, Romans 7, and then Romans 8. Ding, the light turned on. Oh my God, it, Jesus did it all. Then you can have like a real spirit-filled relationship with Jesus and not fear. Remember, it's a throne of grace and you have to come boldly to the throne of grace. Can't come boldly when you're looking at yourself full of sin. Now what does this have to do with the whole rapture thing? Remember, 
a, par, a giant part of Christianity has a hard time with the rapture because they're earthly minded, thinking you got to do better here, you got to have riches here. There's no escaping that. And they clearly deny loads of passages that talk about escaping and that we are new creations and our citizenship is in heaven. We're here as ambassadors for the name of Jesus Christ. And with Jesus on us, man, we're blessed. But there's no... I won't go there, but as a citizen and as an ambassador, we're not from here anymore. And you, you don't inherit, you know, you, this earth, we do inherit it when Jesus claims it. And how does he claim it? By the opening of the seals in the book of Revelation to a locked up scroll that is the deed to the planet earth. So... He has to unlock it. That, that's, that's why it's important. Why do you care so much? Why do you want? Because everything you think you want, everything you talk about of making a better place, the only way that happens is if Jesus opens the seal. And let me tell you, when in book of Revelations, when John went up in chapters 4 and 5, the whole, all of heaven was crying. Who is counted worthy to open the seal? No one. Finally, from the root of Jesse, and the lineage of David, the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, worthy is the Lamb, He is worthy to open the seals. And then they rejoiced. And I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute. If you open up all those seals, it's absolute destruction and horrible judgment here on earth. And like my friends say to me, why do you want that? Why do you want that? Well, why does all of heaven want it opened? Because it is the war to finally kill the dragon and for Jesus Christ to claim full authority and dominion here on earth, on David's throne in the millennial reign. Right? So why did heaven cry and weep? Why would they want that? So that final victory can come. Ye so the full answer is, I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm like black-pilled here, man. I got no confidence in the flesh. It isn't until the rapture that we get what we all want, which is a better place. Those are a couple answers to this thing. Okay, a couple answers. Just do it again tomorrow. Rock and roll, baby.